Good evening and welcome. Our Gloria tonight will be found on number 876, and the mass parts will be found starting with number 860. Please stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 310, Gather Your People, number 310. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, as we begin this Mass, let us first call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, one about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacri sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of, the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall, shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord? For all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. 
Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing comes, come. I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is the body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, 
Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, but you are clean, but not all. For he knew who, who would betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Today at this Mass, we enter in to this year's sacred Triduum, the holiest days of the year in the Christian calendar. As Christ walks through his passion, death, and resurrection, these greatest of mysteries of our faith. And today we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, and Christ's model of service he gave to us all. And in today's gospel, we hear one of my favorite lines, a line that's used in the fourth Eucharistic prayer. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. That as Christ loves us, he does not stop loving us. He loves us to the end of our lives, to the ends of eternity. And in order to do so, in order to love us, he gives us his presence among us. He gives us tangible signs so that we can know not only of his presence, but of his love to us. That in these seven miraculous signs that we call sacraments, these mysteries, he offers us his grace and his love. That today we celebrate especially two sacraments, the Eucharist and the priesthood, holy orders, but we celebrate the entire sacramental economy today at this Mass. That all of these sacraments that we celebrate are signs of God's love and his love to the end. That as we're ushered in to the life of grace and baptism, and this is strengthened in confirmation, as we enter our vocations and holy orders and holy matrimony, as we, as we receive forgiveness of our sins and confession, as we receive the grace to move from this life to the next life to come in anointing of the sick and last rites, and ultimately as we receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity in the sacrament of the Eucharist. That all of these are signs of God's incredible love for us. Knowing that we can't just think and know that we're loved, that we have to see it with our own eyes, experience it, feel it with our senses but we can tangibly witness God's love for us. And so we come to celebrate those sacraments tonight. But as I said, also we celebrate Christ's incredible humility and witness of service to others. As we read in this gospel and as we'll do soon here at the foot of this altar, as we wash the feet, the feet may be the dirtiest part of the person, especially back as they would wear sandals and their feet would be covered in dirt and grime. As they entered into someone's house, it was common to wash the feet of that person, welcoming them into your home. But as Christ physically lowers himself during this act, it's a sign of his lowering himself in the incarnation, to lower himself from being God 
in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit to come down, be born as one of us at Christmas, and to lower himself again tomorrow at Good Friday, dying for our sins, for our salvation. And again, we see in the sacraments this great humility. That Christ would come in the two forms of simple food, not offering us simple service, but offering us nutrition. That we receive him in what used to look what looks as just bread and wine, but we receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity. And he gives us this model of service not as an ideal, but as a as a practice that we can work on. That each one of us is called to this model of same service. That we humble ourselves in the sight of our brothers and sisters around us and love each and every one of God's children. And so today as we enter into these most holy days, we ask for God's grace to do just that. To lower ourselves, to love those around us, to lower ourselves at the foot of the cross to see Christ's immense love for us. That with Christ, as we enter into his death, we also enter into his resurrection. And so we ask for that grace today, to do his will today and every day, from here until the end. this time I'll invite those to have their feet washed forward of our servers go get our stuff.
Please stand. In the name of Jesus, our salvation, life, and resurrection, let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the Holy Catholic Church, may its leaders and each of us as the body of Christ strive to follow Christ's example of love and service to one another, we pray to the Lord. As we celebrate the institution of the priesthood, we pray that young men who feel called to the priesthood and those who have answered this call, especially Jake Rosenmeyer, Thomas Kolash, and the seminarians of our diocese, will courageously answer Christ's invitation. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all nations and peoples of the world, that Christ's peace may reign forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, That we have a greater reverence and spirit of gratitude for the gift of Christ's body and blood given to us in the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, That the hungry and thirsty, the sick, imprisoned, and the homeless may come to know Christ in the compassion of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus made his cross the tree of life. May those who have died receive its fruit and come into his glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear the prayers we place before you. May we serve you by serving one another. May we give you thanks by living lives with grateful hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. This last Monday, we had the Chrism Mass in Sioux City, and so we'll now have the receiving of the oils, uh, the sacred oils that will be used throughout this year for all all of our baptisms, confirmations, anointing the sick. Um, We'll have those brought forward at this time. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. Through anointing with this oil, may our catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. When you meet together in my name, remember this. I bore your shame. Use these symbols to remember me. When you drink the cup, remember me. When you eat the bread, remember me. Till I come again, remember me.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make, us, make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Song to song to song to Storminus Deus Abbaot, Pleni Suns Celi et Terra, Gloria to most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and for the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuam, Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam, Resurrectionem Confitemur, Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. And only say the word, and my soul shall be in
Gethsemane Lay still and dark Creation watched in silence all As Jesus suffered his Father's will to satisfy unyielding love. He knelt in earnest prayer alone. His friends were come with sorrow slept beneath the burden of grief he groaned beneath the weights of sin he wept and with his blood so freely spent he bought my soul he paid my debt what work of love was wrought for me in the stillness of Gethsemane. This bitter cup wilt thou remove, yet not my will, but thine be done. Behold his anguish and weep anew. For love of Christ, the sinless one, with his wounds my own are healed, my every pain or come in his. My shame, my weakness, my grief untold, find ransom in his priceless gift. For with his blood so freely spent, he bought my soul, he paid my my debt, what work of love was wrought for me in the stillness of Gethsemane. In the stillness of Gethsemane. Let us pray. (laughs) 
Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. After the Last Supper with Christ, he went out with his apostles to a quiet place to pray before he was arrested. And so this evening, keeping with a long-standing tradition in the church, we'll process through the aisles with the Eucharist um, before bringing him to the altar of repose over here. Um, there will be no formal ending um, to the evening. We'll have uh, adoration available um, in the altar of repose until 10 o'clock tonight. Um, so I invite you all to spend some time with the Blessed Sacrament tonight. Um, praying with Christ before his passion. Um, and I also ask you that once you are finished praying for the evening, just to leave here in silence as we go into uh, Good Friday tomorrow. 